<laughs> it's the indi- the indifferent stars above, or <laughs> or how to read a shitty map. How to read a shitty map? Get your family fucked and eat a butt for survival. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Tether Radio Podcast, the only podcast keeping you from spiraling out into the infinite abyss. I'm your host, Daniel, and I'm joined, as always, by my brother and co-host, Joseph. Back on the horse, baby. (laughs) Blood on the saddle. Blood on the ground. Ain't it? Big (laughs) Ain't it the truth, dude? (laughs) Ain't it the truth, man? How, How was your week? How was your week? It's good, man. Um, it was. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Um, it was a long toward the end of it. Uh, I accidentally fed Finn um, <laughs> pancakes that had egg in them, so he decided egg does not uh, set well with Finn. So he uh, he started vomiting on the way to daycare. So I didn't get to take him to daycare on Thursday. So it was not cool, <laughs> but. Uh, but yeah, uh, other than that, um, and then he spiked like a, a 104.3 temperature on Friday for absolutely no reason. So, uh, well, yeah, I mean, the kids. joys of, the joys of child rearing. Kids, <laughs> what are you going to do, man? What are you going to do? Hey, yeah. uh, he'll, he'll, he's going to grow up and be very successful and, and you'll be thankful you did all this. Yeah, exactly. How was your week, man? It was good. This is good. Nothing, nothing new to report. Just, uh, just doing the thing, man. Yeah. Just doing the thing. Just l- living the life. Going cool. through the, uh, the night day cycles and and trying to enjoy it as much as possible. So right, all right. is good, my brother. But roll, um, roll, man. well, we've got a uh, we've got a, a juicy cast today mm-hmm. for sure. Um, we're gonna we're gonna. We're gonna go this way. We're gonna go that way. We're gonna we're gonna drive. We're gonna take drive. her to the left. We're then we're gonna take her to the right. <laughs> then we're gonna drive, 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 drive. <laughs> yeah. Um. And uh, and then we'll, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna punch it over the goal line. Um. Uh. And we'll and we'll keep everything on track. So it's gonna be it's gonna be good, man. Um. There are a couple that I'm super excited to dive into uh, with you here. Yeah. Which which by the way we. <laughs> I, I'm just curious, you know, if everybody else knows the, the history of Cinco de Mayo also. I yeah, which, by the way, obviously we record uh, on the Sunday before the Monday that episodes go out. So we are we are live on Cinco today. But uh, but yeah, dude, why don't you uh, why don't you take our listeners on a little history lesson? <laughs> Yeah, so just in case um just in case anybody's wondering uh about Cinco and uh and what Cinco de Mayo means, right? Um which this Daniel and I were just discovering this. But it says um after doing a little bit of research here, it being the internet says that uh, <laughs> that uh, a lot of people mistake Daniel. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Um, a lot, a lot of people. Say, yeah, Joseph totally called my my bluff earlier. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't think it means anything. <laughs> no, but a, a lot of people mistake it for Cinco de Mayo for Mexican Independence Day, which is fun fact on September 16th, mm-hmm. not on the 5th of May. But uh, in the state of Puebla, Cinco de Mayo is celebrated. Um, more vigorously, <laughs> more vigorously <laughs> than, than than in other states, uh, and it is a celebration that represents or is is uh, set to commemorate the Mexican army's victory over the French Empire at the Battle of Puebla in 1862. Mm. So interesting, right? 1862. Um, you know, we had some shit of our own going on over on this side. This yeah. side. Yeah, this side of the, uh, of the, uh, I guess up, up a little bit north, but yeah. any, anyway, I'm stumbling over my words. It's time to move the fuck on. <laughs> well, dude, on. real quick mention. Um, I, uh, I got a book from a friend that, um, that it, uh, I can't, I can't remember. I think it's called the, the indifferent 
the indifference in stars or something like that. Um, okay. And it's about the Donner Party, and that was like eighteen whatever, eighteen forty mid, like eighteen forty six ish or something like that. Right. I'm only like fifty, fifty, sixty pages in, but it's like very well written. So I would one hundred percent recommend it for any any listeners that want to check out the the Donner Party uh, incident, I guess. But uh, but it's really fucking good. I would definitely it's, definitely check it. Yeah, that I'm sure that book is going to be full of nar. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, dude, it's it's crazy. It's crazy because I I always thought that the Donner Party stuff. The main thing was that they got a late start, um, and then a freak uh, like storm. I thought that those were kind of the the main things, but like there was like this guy that wrote this book on like basically a, a, a guide to immigrating to the West. Okay, and uh, he basically said that this one route would be like quicker, but it wasn't the normal route that people would take to try to get to California, and. I mean, it was, it, and he had like never taken the route kind of thing. The guy that wrote the book, he just fucking said it. And so they read all this shit and all these like settlers tried to fucking hoof it through like some of the roughest terrain between like fucking, I think it was like Illinois and, um, um, California, but, and it was some, just crazy. and some, and some made it. And then their situation was just like a super gnarly. Yeah, it was just like, it basically fucking Murphy's Law was at play for the Donner Party. And like literally everything that could go wrong went wrong. So I should have Murphy, Murphy's Law, like Murphy Brown. <laughs> exactly. You familiar? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I like Cheers. <laughs> Wasn't Murphy Brown a spinoff of Cheers? I have no fucking clue, dude. I know, I know the name Murphy Brown, but that's about it. So I think maybe no, maybe Murphy Brown wasn't a spinoff of Cheers, and that probably sounds like dumb as shit to somebody that was like a, a big Cheers fan. I think Murphy Brown was like a, an attorney or whatever. Again, yeah. dude, I'm, I'm off track again. <laughs> we'll, to... we'll we'll go ahead and cruise into the uh, the actual meat yeah, of the geez. the episode. <laughs> yeah, Jesus, dude, I just keep falling <laughs> off the wagon. You know, on both on both sides now. That's but awesome. uh, but yeah, dude. Say the name of the book just one more time. Uh, I believe. Let me double check. Um, when you first started to say, do, do you, when you first said the title, yeah. I was thinking the difference in our stars is <laughs> that is it that like a like a. <laughs> Like a like a preteen romance novel, you know, you know, talking yeah. about that. I was yeah, like, hmm. hmm. Yeah. That's, it's an interesting summer read. It's a really good young adult novel. Yeah. <laughs> I've been reading a lot of young adult, young adult novels. novels. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, so the the name of the book is uh, "The Indifferent Stars Above," and it is by um, it is by Daniel James Brown, and on Amazon it's only. Five dollars and thirty nine cents for a paperback, and it's got four and a half stars from six six hundred and seventy three reviews. So. The the <laughs> <laughs> the indifferent stars above. That's 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 such a lofty title. Like a more appropriate title would be like how to read a shitty map and get fucked and then eat, a butt. <laughs> yeah, and, then eat a, and then eat a butt for survival. <laughs> 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 it's the indi- the indifferent stars above, or <laughs> or how to, Much read a a butt. how to read a shitty map, get your family fucked, and eat a butt for survival. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! All right, and on that note, <laughs> we'll go ahead and start the episode. Um, okay. All right. Yeah, man. So so the first uh, the first curveball here. Yeah, comes from Florida, which but this is definitely some Florida shit, man. I yeah. love Florida. I love Florida, but man, it's a it's a it's, it's, it's shit definitely. goes down in yeah. Florida, man. <laughs> Seriously, so yeah. <laughs> so I pulled this one from uh, Fox Five, uh, just a local uh, Fox affiliate down there, and um, it's called "Elderly Florida Woman Fins Off Three Hundred Pound Half Naked Burglar <laughs> with a Baseball Bat." So. This is down in uh, yeah, yeah, my interest is peaked. Um, so this was down in Gainesville, and uh, a burglar wearing only his underwear tried to break into a great grandma's car. Which I love that they describe her as a great grandma. 
Like they, they couldn't just say like whatever her age or whatever, but, um, well, that's probably because she's like 47. Yeah. yeah actually she's 65 and she's uh, a great grandma. So <laughs> get her done. <laughs> yeah. Right. But, um, but anyway, she, uh, but she had a baseball bat and she would not have that shit. So, uh, the main reason I pulled this article is because the quotes are like phenomenal in my opinion. But, um, anyway, she was quoted as, uh, saying, this is my weapon right here. Mess with me. I'm going to try to pop you. <laughs> and that's Clarice Ganey. Sounds, sounds about right. <laughs> so, about. so yeah, she said that she heard like banging on, on uh, the door uh, of her car. And then, um, or I guess she just heard banging outside of her car. And then she said that she saw this 300 pound uh, Mosley, which uh, I was trying to find the dude's first name i can't uh antonio mosley okay um she saw him and uh he turned at her and charged but uh she was she was ready and waiting she was going to saying i mean i popped him i said bia he said ah you hit me (laughs) (laughs) how did they spell bia (laughs) b-i-y-a okay okay right or yeah. do you think it's bia? Bia. Bia. Yeah, but, I think uh, that's it. I think but yeah. that's so uh so he was literally this dude was wearing underwear and that was it. Um so he ran off half naked toward a nearby trailer park. Um and she said uh he had nothing but his drawers on, no shoes, no shirt or nothing. Uh they found him. She identified him pretty much right away and uh and basically, she left him and, and all other crooks with this message. Uh, I put a good one on him, but he's in jail. I ain't going to worry about him no more. I bet you won't mess with that green goblin there no more. <laughs> which I have no fucking clue what she's referencing when she says green goblin. I I I, I wonder if it's... uh Maybe her car? <laughs> it's her car or the bat. It's got to be. Yeah. Or literally, car she's got green, a goblin but... on a string. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> Which, yeah, I, I felt I felt like this one was worthy of at least a mention. So, yeah, dude, what? That's interesting. Yeah, but uh, but anyway, we'll go ahead and cruise on to uh, to the next one. This next one was just it was kind of funny, but at the same time, if this if they can get this tech uh, implemented in a actual usable way, I, it, it'll be really really neat. But um, I pulled it from the next web and um, a Twitter bot. It was called a Twitter bot that translates jungle sounds to existential questions might just help save the rainforest. Okay. So, um, and I, I'm just going to read this first paragraph real quick. On Thursday, March 21st at uh, 1236 a.m., a cricket in Borneo chirped, fuck me and you and he, 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 and his and what he really <laughs> question mark wow so <laughs> this is a this is a vocal little guy yeah right but um but yeah so yeah yeah basically so, what's, so yeah what are they how, what are they doing how are they determining this what's yeah, going on so this guy um this this uh researcher um sarab seti um he created this uh twitter account existential jungle bot and basically what happens is he he was developing tech to put in rainforests so that he would um or that they would be able, be able to create like a fingerprint for like different areas okay and so they could basically uh create a database and then once they put out more um the more data that they get they can cross reference and stuff and they're hoping to eventually be able to monitor jungle sounds in real time to to listen for changes in biodiversity. Okay. So um so they want to look into how like logging and like climate uh climate change stuff and just um basically what uh they they want to monitor what animals are in certain areas and why are they in those certain areas and like do they migrate when do they migrate all this stuff and you'll they'll be able to do it in real time uh eventually hopefully right right but um 
but yeah, so um, but I thought that that was a, a pretty cool little system. But the the guy was just having a little fun with it since they're they're generating all this um, or they they're recording all of this sound. He wanted to uh, use a text to uh, or a speech to text um, algorithm to okay. to send these tweets out occasionally, kind of thing. And um, what the funny thing was is he was like, I was going to use Google Translate, but their their algorithm's too good, and it was just recognizing the fact that um, that it was not actual speech, kind of right. thing, that it was just right. sounds. Right. And so he he said that uh, he ended up settling on um, oh what the hell was it? It, it was called like uh, something Sphinx. Um, I I like the uh, the other tweet that they have here. Yeah. Whoop of the butt. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know. So, but but I like his quote too in here. Right. He says. Mm-hmm. Um, he said uh, during the interview, I'm secretly an artist trying to get by as a scientist. He, the interviewer said he jokes, but in an email he sent, uh, sent me after our conversation with a slightly more serious art. Uh, he said, uh, said he says mm-hmm. um, a sli- uh, slightly more artistic message to the uh, – let's see. Da, 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 da. Right. He wanted to have a slightly more serious artistic message to the bot rather than stupid humor. He states that I'd, I'd say it's a comment on how fallible seemingly advanced machine learning techniques are and yeah. how far away we are from a robot apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, right? No, I, I, that, I, I figured you'd get a kick out of that because, you know, buzzwords these days are fucking AI, machine learning, fucking whatever, learning algorithms, all that jazz. And I mean, like, we are, we are so incredibly far from, like, true AI and true, like, machine learning that it's just, I mean, it's basically like, I, I would liken it to uh, AT and T saying that they have a five G E network at this point, or whatever, or was it? Right. Yeah, it was AT and T. Right. But um, but yeah, because I mean, dude, five G, the the amount of infrastructure that is going to have to be changed in order to have like five G coverage for the like hell, even for a, a one state, you're gonna have to like you're gonna have to put up probably five five to ten times the number of like cell towers that we currently have just because the 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 um distance that that 5g travels is so much like lower than what we're currently using so right but it's just it's so far removed i mean everybody's like 5g 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 machine learning ai all this shit and we're just very 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 far away from from that shit actually being relevant i guess or at least to the being being able to implement it into day-to-day processes and stuff yeah yeah certainly being and it being, being autonomous i guess but. and being scaled to the yeah. to the point you know where it actually makes sense to use in daily life yeah that's super interesting but i i like the um I don't know. I, I, I dig that story i dig that story for a couple of reasons but mm-hmm. i think it's one is like i just never really thought about um, acoustic mapping or whatever I forget mm. what they referred to it in the in the article as. Um, but uh, yeah, that idea that you could lay a mic down and get a pretty good idea of you know um of like the thumbprint, I guess is what you said, right? Mm-hmm. Of of that area. I thought that was really I thought that was really really interesting. It makes sense though, right? Like yeah. animals animals probably probably aren't like completely nomadic and they probably have a zone they operate in. So yeah, it's kind it's kind of sure. cool. It's kind of yeah. a cool idea. The the other cool thing is is just talking about the actual hardware that he's using. He's using uh, a a kit based on uh Raspberry Pi. Oh, cool. So, cool. and and then it's connected uh, to the internet through a three G phone signal, and then he's got solar panels on that um, to power it. But um, but it was also kind of kind of funny. He was talking about the um, the journey getting getting the hardware to the point to where you know basically he's putting he's putting a, a, a um, electronic device. Mm-hmm. In somewhere that is not very friendly to electronic devices, right? This, right, this right, like right. wet, damp, you know, like you've got like you know insects. 
which we we just recently rewatched uh, Planet Earth, small tangent. Um, and they were just talking about how uh, the number of insects that we ha- still haven't even identified, kind of thing. And right. so in this in this article, he was talking about how <laughs> ants crawled into his device and ate the microphone. <laughs> Right, 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 so, right. And you could you could hear David Attenborough just laying that one down, <laughs> you know? Yeah. In, in Borneo, ants are king. You know what I mean? Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> whatever you would say. They love to munch microphones. The microphone, unfortunately, didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, my God. It, it, Dude, it, 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 <laughs> Did you did you know that uh, another small tangent? Did you know that Richard Attenborough is David Attenborough's brother, and he was the fucking scientist on uh, Jurassic Park, the dude that built the park. He was the main guy. That's oh really? Yeah, right. <laughs> Richard, oh my god, really? Yeah. The, yeah. the the guy that the uh, the granddad, the granddad, yeah. Wow. Granddaddy, yeah. granddaddy, I can see the fleas. <laughs> you know, see that story? Yeah, yeah. And they're eating the ice cream. <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, my God. Anyway. Bingo, um, dino DNA. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that movie actually holds up really well. Really well. Yeah. Dude, really well. I saw it maybe two months ago or something. Yeah. And, like, the mix... What's so crazy mm. is that God damn, we're on a tangent. But yeah, this, is, this is this is like just I'll squeak this in real quickly. So they used a a hearty mix of um, so Steven Stil- Spielberg <laughs> Steven Spielberg directed that, right? Correct. Okay, and one of the big concerns, like apparently. I, not apparently, but uh, evidently, after reading a couple of articles, Steven Spielberg wanted to do Jurassic Park for a while. Yeah. Um, but he didn't feel like that. He thought that animatronics were kind of whack and weren't going to get the job done. Yeah. Um, and uh, which, after his bout with the fucking Jaws, right. right? And and like that's the interesting part about Jaws. God damn, we're going down this this I thing know. this this rabbit hole. I'll get there quickly. That's the interesting part about Jaws. They don't show the shark that much, right? Yeah. yeah. Um. And so he thought, like, okay, uh, animatronics aren't really there. And then after seeing, <laughs> after seeing, you know, computer uh, computer animation at the time, you remember that shit, Mind's Eye through the mind's eye? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, through the mind's eye. <laughs> yeah, that, that was that was just pulled from fucking lawnmower man. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh yeah no 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 I actually think it was the other way around oh, yeah that wouldn't surprise me <laughs> yeah yeah I'm serious I think that <laughs> that they were pulling you know pulling the lawnmower man footage or whatever from like Mind's Eye B real or whatever <laughs> yeah yeah um but um but um yeah so they used animatronics and computer animation mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. um and uh. And the result was fucking awesome. Yeah. And then, but it was a really expensive film to shoot, I think, if I'm remembering the story correctly. And so then when they like went the other way and just started using computer animation for everything because it was much cheaper. Yeah. uh, Then you end up with just, you know. Garbage um, piles. Sharknado or whatever. (laughs) Sharknado, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So, um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, onward and upward. Okay. So fill us in on this fraudulent supplier claim that's been leveled by nasa what the fuck is yeah. going on yeah, yeah dude um which this is I, I i felt like this was i'm kind of surprised that this article didn't get a little bit more traction in the news but um i pulled it from gizmodo and basically uh well it's titled nasa says fraudulent supplier caused it to lose two climate satellites uh wasting over 700 million dollars so Basically, what happened was um, NASA found out that one of their, um, I'm I'm assuming they have multiple suppliers, but uh, one of their aluminum suppliers, which was um, Sapa Profiles uh, up in Oregon, that they, they were found to have basically falsified test data for, um, and I was trying to remember what the... 
uh, they're called frangible joints. And basically what they, what they do is they split and release the rocket's, uh, fairings. So basically once, um, once like, uh, I believe that it's, it's basically once when you, when you see the boosters like being blown off of, you know, uh, rockets when once they've used all their fuel or whatever. Okay. I think that that's kind of what, what it is, is that it's like, it's the joint that holds that it's, it's supposed to be very, it, it's, it's supposed to have a lot of structural integrity, but it's supposed to be, I think, very, um, like brittle almost maybe, so that when they have the explosive go off, that it just shatters it and then, you know, it, it works like it's supposed to. Well, um, Basically, what happened is these these were too strong, so they, they would actually ma- they accidentally made it out of a gummy worm. <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. Fuck, fuck. Yeah. They made it, they made it out of uh, out of uh, phloem. Yeah, oh, <laughs> gack. We made it out of gack. Gack. <laughs> oh man, but uh, but yeah, so. Um, so they Hello. they were found to have um which this was kind of interesting to me they figured that they had lost you know over 700 million dollars uh worth of uh hardware but then um once they found this out um let's see the uh oh, where's the quote yeah, here we go. So according to the Department of Justice press release on April 23rd, SPI's uh, parent company, Nord's, Norsk Hydro ASA, has agreed to a deal in which it would pay out $46 million to NASA, the, okay. the Department of Defense, and other entities uh, to, quote, resolve criminal charges and civil claims relating to a 19-year fraud scheme that included falsifying thousands of certifications the certifications got certifications for uh, aluminum extrusions provided to hundreds of customers. Okay. So just NASA alone lost over seven hundred million dollars worth of hardware. They're gonna pay out forty six million to three or to basically forty six million among all the people that they fucked over. That just doesn't. <laughs> I don't feel like the numbers work. <laughs> Wait, say say that again. Say that again one more time. Okay, so there, uh, NASA said that just just the two satellites um, that they lost were over seven hundred million dollars, kind of right, thing. right. But um, in order to avoid criminal charges and civil claims, um, the 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 parent company of um, of the aluminum provider. Uh, they're going to pay out forty six million dollars among basically everybody that they've provided aluminum to over the course of the nineteen years. Well, you know, forty six million dollars, you know, in in nineteen <laughs> in nineteen ninety nine, that was for something different, you know. So that's what they did. Yeah, they pe- they, they pegged to the nineteen year mark. You know? Yeah, right. Um, adjusted for inflation, seven hundred <laughs> seven million and one cent. Perfect. Yeah, but it was just like I, I just, I don't know. I feel like well, this is this is just another one of those cases that it's like, wait, 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 wait. So you're just gonna basically slap them on the wrist because you know that the fucking uh, the deals that they made up to that point. I mean, you you know that the the contracts that they had were e- probably in the billions. You know. <laughs> Sure, sure. And and the answer is yes, right? I mean, I'm sure that there are NASA loses 700 million dollars. It's not like they're that's you know, they're actually losing 700 million dollars. I'm sure there's like an insurance component. I'm sure there's, you know, a, a a variety of different factors that, you know, chisel away at that number or whatever. But um So who do yeah. you think NASA has for rocket insurance? <laughs> <laughs> Geico, for sure. <laughs> for sure. No, dude, yeah. I bet there are specialty insurance companies that yeah. lick their fucking chops at this stuff because they can charge insane premiums yeah. and, uh, you know, know that they're basically never um, going to pay out unless it's $700 million and that's a huge pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> and they probably they probably go broke and then spin up another uh, rocket insurance company and start the whole process over. Yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, man, like the, 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 the fuckery that happens at that level, yeah. it's crazy. 
Oh yeah. It's totally crazy. Because I mean, town. dude, they they they'll even be paying out to the Department of Defense, so which is kind of scary because it's like, okay, you know, I mean, these these are like people's lives, you know. But yeah. It's like, oh, could could this like fucking frangible joint be on like some kind of fighter jet, you know, for like a hell, I don't know, like an ejection seat, right? So it it doesn't fucking eject properly. That's right. Or could that frangible joint be holding your Mountain Dew in your golf cart? <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. dude like, i'd know exactly what you mean yeah you know, you know, y'all know what i'm talking about y'all know. Yeah. And, yeah, and dude. Just imagine, if i imagine. lose one more code red i'm i'm fucking take y'all to court I ma- imagine that man <laughs> and i'm sick of it i'm sick of my goddamn code red spilling all over the place <laughs> Jesus, Judy, this is the third time it's happened this, this week. Where in the fuck are you buying those frangible joints? <laughs> oh, my gosh. No, I'm with you, If dude. my Code Red spills in my chicken fries one more fucking time. <laughs> I swear, I just got that poutine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, um, but, yeah, so, but I was kind of surprised that this didn't get a little bit more traction. Um just because, I mean, fuck, man. That that's just. It seems like a. It seems like a pretty big fucking deal to me. But I don't know. I guess. Uh, I guess the the news is more concerned with fucking. I don't. I don't even know what Jesse Smollett or something. Yeah. Or yeah. Or what. Or what. How you know Kim dressed uh, dressed West up or whatever the fuck you know. Yeah. What I mean? North. Uh, is that his name? Is Isn't that his name? North. Oh, that's right. Northwest. Yeah. 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 Otherwise, yeah, it'd be I'm, West I'm, West. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, 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 the idiocy of the naming scheme <laughs> threw me off. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, um, anyway. but right on. So speaking of supply chains, mm-hmm. right? Which we were talking uh, about this a little bit. Um, blockchain stuff. Uh, blockchain would help to fucking make this shit go away pretty much. Theoretically, yeah. Theor- theoretically, yeah. But anyway, go ahead and take us into it. Theor- theoretically, keeping a visible, you know, um, unowned, not a decentralized, I guess it would be a more appropriate way to put it. Um, like pedigree like, for like materials and shit. Yeah, right. right, right. A, le- a ledger, a universal ledger on, on materials could be interesting, but that is um, – Having worked in that shit for five years, <laughs> yeah. that's uh, that's definitely a world of the world of the future. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Theoretically, it could definitely help. So, um, I completely misread this article when I uh, pitched it to you to get it into um, to oh, get on it the show. onto the show. Yeah. But it actually turns out that it's much more interesting than um, than when I pitched it, which mm-hmm. was cool. Cool. Okay. So I, I scanned this article. Um, the title of the article is A Mysterious Hacker Group is on a Supply Chain Hacking Spree. Um, but what they're actually talking about in this, uh, in this article, rather than um, physical supply chains, well, I th- what I thought that they were saying was that they yeah. were, they were ha- like some sort of hacking was resulting in um, you know, parts being mismanaged or whatever, mm-hmm. that, or, you know, like cri- critical components that weren't going through a certain process they should go through. That's what uh-huh. I thought. But as it turns out, what the article is about is um, software, malicious software being slotted into um, the software, the general software supply chain, right? Uh, okay. Um, which is kind of even more interesting. So the idea here is that, you know, if we look at, at something like a phishing attack, right? Are you familiar with, uh, phishing, what that is? Uh, yeah, but go ahead and, um, go ahead and kind of explain it just, just in case listeners aren't. Yeah. So, so the, the general updraft here would be you get an email, um, the email and this, and there, there's a nuance between phishing and spear phishing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'd have to look that up, but, um, 
the general updraft is, and the reason that I'm I'm using um, fishing as an example is because that happens kind of at the end of the of the chain of the supply chain, right? You already have, you already have your computer. You're already already using some sort of you know software to run that computer, and then you're using um, you know whatever web browser of choice you know that that mm-hmm. that you're that you're using um and then let's say you get an email and this email says hey this is from ford motor company and you need to renew your you know whatever your uh your profile with ford motor company or whatever or it looks yeah. like it came from your bank or something mm-hmm. and then you click on the link and the link takes you to a malicious website which then appears to you as though it is the actual website of the mm-hmm. the um, company that you expect, you put your password in. That information is being recorded, and now somebody else has your password, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's like it's fairly common, fairly yeah. common uh, attack. So by the way, I just looked up <clears throat> the spear phishing versus phishing. The only difference is basically it's uh, personalized for spear phishing. It's personalized. So okay. it's so it's basically saying, "Hey, Daniel, you know, whatever they they know. I think they know some kind of like some something about you already, and then use that information to basically personalize it to you." Got it. Got it. But okay. Anyway, okay. So yeah, so maybe it's like phishing is like yeah, like getting the general information, and then mm-hmm. once you have like a list of emails, then you can spear fish or something like that. Yeah. Um, so what, what is happening with this in this article is that they're, they're saying that malicious software is being inserted, um, like early on in the process of building the machines and the software, right? So like when you get your computer, it's already infected. Yeah. And so that is, is, this is kind of, uh, Sounds similar to that that Bloomberg article, absolutely, right? Absolutely, which I am still like sketched the fuck out by that whole thing because and it just got swept under the rug, man. Well, here's the deal, dude. Uh-huh. Supposedly, it didn't happen. Yeah. Supposedly, the entire thing that we covered on with like the the you know um, uh, with malicious software being inserted. You know, in the in these servers, mm-hmm. and that then the origin of those servers was from um, was from China. Supposedly, it didn't happen. Yeah, and so Bloomberg was like castigated for, um, you know, reporting on something that they supposedly they didn't research well. Yeah, it's like I definitely don't believe that. Yeah. I, it, without it, it a sounds doubt, like it, hush hush kind of stuff. Fucking hey, yeah, of course, yeah. of course. Like, and coincidentally, you know, like we're, we're in this this super heated moment with that area of the world. Yeah, I, you know, no way, <laughs> yeah. no way, right? Like, I think somebody saw some shit, reported it, and then they got a call from a red phone, you know, and somebody mm-hmm. being like, you know, kill the fucking story. Yeah, because we're in the middle of some kind of negotiation, and we need leverage, and you're fucking our shit up. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But um anyway, onward to this. So mm-hmm. um and I can I can get through this uh fairly fairly quickly, but like basically they're uh, infecting um uh the the um, um software uh-huh. uh, at, like very early on in the in the uh in the you know, build cycle or whatever mm-hmm. of the software. And so this was this was the thing that just blew my fucking mind. They were saying it, at the end of this article, they say um, Barium, which was the name of the attack, right, mm-hmm. went so far as to plant its malware by corrupting the version of Microsoft Visual Studio compiler that it, there was like a video game hacking case that the game developers were using, essentially hiding one supply chain attack within another. So, That's dude, it's fucking crazy. I so mean, you're, dude, using you're Visual writing, Studios. Well, you're so you're writing code. You are literally typing, you know, creating code, a code base, in in VS Code, right? Mm-hmm. And then when you compile that, so you, when you compile code, you're taking like one language and like you know basically translating it into another language. Uh-huh. And so when that language is getting translated into another language, yeah. when that when that is happening. Um, the code is being um, is being corrupted. 
Like that's fucking crazy, dude. That is that, super insane. It, it 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 really is, and it ma- it makes it makes me think of the article. I think we covered we covered this article like a month ago or something, mm-hmm. where we were we were talking about the complexity of writing software mm-hmm. and how and how it's gotten to the point where it's kind of too complex for human beings to do. Yeah. That it's didn't, almost didn't we that? Yeah. Where it's like, yeah. Where you're it like, almost it's almost like you you have to use you have to use tech, well, it's almost like we're approaching the singularity kind of thing. <laughs> right. Well, exactly because because the issue is that while I may be able to write code that makes a widget do a thing, I don't have context. Mm-hmm. And so like the 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 result like that widget doing its thing in a massively complex system mm-hmm. very well probably is going to fuck some break something else yeah. right yeah. um and so and I think the example that they used in the article was like a code base for a car or something mm-hmm. it was like millions of lines long <laughs> something yeah. fucking crazy and there's just no way that you're going to go through and be able to audit that you yeah. know yeah. um in a, in a, well, audit that and also think through um, just how all of it all of it is connected. But anyway, yeah. I mean, this is just yet another another reason that we will continue to look, you know, to machines to do um, to do this type of work because it's like, yeah. dude, I mean, inserting it in a compiler is just crazy. That is yeah. so that is such a crazy idea. Yeah. And I think I, I for me, and I'm I'm fairly new to the programming game but for me i think that the thing that's like really interesting about this is that um i don't know like if you're using a compiler i'm assuming you are less fluent in the code that it is being compiled to i'm assuming i think that's a pretty safe assumption that which makes mean, sense which mm-hmm. means that you're writing in one code base you're compiling to another or excuse me one language you're compiling to another so you're not going to fucking know yeah. You're not gonna know. There's no. I mean, and so it's just a. It is. Uh, it's obvious as we talk about it now, but it's very, really smart hack and really interesting. Yeah. Um, well, plus the thing is, is I mean, basically anything that's developed on using that um, that software or whatever is going to be infected, right? Because yeah, it, well, because it's all running through that compiler. Yes, it just yes, absolutely. Right. But it depends on it depends on um what the purpose of the code is, right? Because yeah. you know, if they're I mean this is this is a bad example, but if if they're compiling I don't know, some action in a video game or whatever, some some something, some kind of uh I don't know. So, something in a video game, mm-hmm. um, and and they're they're trying to hack that action. Mm-hmm. If if the video game people, you know, were compiling code to then, you know, do what about what about compiling code for like a video game's network stuff? Well, right, you know well, what I'm saying? Well, right, right. But I mean, it's like the code the code itself, like the malicious code itself, has to be yeah. written for a specific purpose. Yeah. So sure. if that specific purpose isn't relevant in whatever other code base, ah, then, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, and I'm saying a very, very, very specific purpose. Cause that's kind of the nature of the beast, right? Like you're yeah. literally saying when this very specific thing happens, mm-hmm. then I want you to like capture this information or whatever. And yeah. so if that specific thing would never happen in a, diff- a slightly different scenario, yeah. then the, then, um, which honestly, that may have been now that now that we're talking about this, that may have yeah. been how the bug was discovered. Is that that it just like didn't fo- like work or well, something? Yeah, well, that it could they, somebody else compiled something that was kind of similar or whatever, mm-hmm. just a different enough to where the code actually broke mm-hmm. the other code, and then mm-hmm. somebody went in and said, "What the fuck is this?" You know what I mean? Yeah. What is this? What is this? You know, were these seven lines of you know whatever yeah anyway um super interesting that's man. crazy but, though yeah but um yeah i mean it's that's where we are <laughs> this is yeah. wh- this is where we are <laughs> um but um yeah so this this next one yeah um wh- i i don't want to spend a ton of time on this sure. but um, this next one is just man i just continue to be fucking creeped out by this by this whole DNA scene. Oh, but I know, dude. Yeah. I just, it's, it is, it's like a slow motion train wreck. And like, yeah. 
the thing that's crazy is that I fundamentally I don't disagree with or, or I guess not fundamentally, but fundamentally I do disagree. But philosophically, I don't disagree with why they're using it now, like the way that, that it's being used, these, DN, these uh, DNA databases. Mm-hmm. But it's just like the devil's in the fucking details. And with this – with DNA in particular, like you, you cannot get it back in the bottle. You know what I yeah. mean? If yeah. you have – if you have, <laughs> because we're all related to Kevin, or you're all connected to Kevin Bacon, <laughs> yeah. um, no, but if you Let's have... Let's just hope he never takes the 23andMe or Ancestry. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I mean, I'll, I'll bet you, and I don't know what this, what this number is. I would love to, fig- to think through this and figure this out. But how much of the human population, how many people, what percentage of the, of the population of human beings would you need the DNA of mm-hmm. to be able to guess the rest? Yeah, you know what I mean, and like, or not even guess the rest, but approximate, or like, or like, do like super nefarious shit where you could say like, maybe I don't know everybody, but I know this group is is definitely not this other group. Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah, I don't, I don't even know if that makes sense, but like, in in the way that this is, you may know a little bit more about this because of your background, but you know, like, would it be possible, for example, to take like. I don't know, 40% of, um, of uh, the DNA of Americans and then just – and then start kind of approximating like who is connected to who without having the other 60%. Like probably yeah. that's what the fuck's going on here, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah. – I would say you would not have to have the majority. I can tell you that much. Yeah. Exactly. It would definitely be under fifty percent. Exactly. Exactly. So that's so. that's that's the thing that's so bananas on this. So let me just let me just you know chat about this article here because yeah. I just kind of hopped straight into it. <laughs> yeah. But um, basically, you know, Daniel and I have covered this a couple of times on the uh, on the cast. But um, but uh, there was a guy who uh, raped and murdered um, a woman in nineteen ninety four. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think raped and murdered. We'll just say we'll say murdered because I know that for a fact. Uh-huh. Um, but murdered this woman in 1994. Um, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, and it was, so, it was a rape and murder, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Raped and murdered this woman in 1994. Mm-hmm. And um, and long story short, the 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 police had kind of zeroed in on this guy thought that you know he might be the guy um and were able to get his dna off of a cigarette butt compare this dna to a quote public database whatever the fuck that means in this context yeah. and um and the dude kind of looks like he could be benedict cumberbatch's dad <laughs> he definitely looks like the type of dude that that probably murders people you know what I mean? he just yeah. looks he looks like gen, generally unhappy and his real tree shirt tells me that he was hot real, it, you know his real tree shirt it, you know <laughs> y- y'all feel me like yeah. look at that look at that thing dude then they were like and here's the fucked up part he was in plain view the whole time <laughs> <laughs> which is just he was stand, he's standing against a pile of big a big ass pile of leaves a big ass sitting. pile of brush yeah and he, there he was in the brambles. Just looked at, looked like a floating head <laughs> in the brambles. That's all. Awesome. <laughs> um, but um, yeah. So anyway, guy guy smokes a cigarette, flicks a cigarette, get his DNA off the cigarette, um, and then um, compare it to this database, which one of his relatives had done the twenty three and Me tap dance, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they were able to connect the dots and get this guy uh, convicted um, or get this guy arrested. Mm. What is so insanely interesting to me, again, is that we are – people are giving their DNA up to these services. And the services shittily tell you, yeah, 6% <laughs> Slavic or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and it's like everybody gets a giggle and then puts it up on the fridge for five months and then forgets about it, right? <laughs> and like, and plus you're paying to give them correct. Your, I mean, your dude, it, it is DNA. it's the it is the most amazing bit of marketing ever. Yeah, I yeah. mean, 
Really, dude, I'm telling you, if you don't think, have you, did you watch the Ther, uh, Theranos documentary yet? No, I haven't, dude. I, I, um, literally you, the, you, the you couple that we had over <laughs> last night, we're talking about, you, talking about it. You gotta watch it. It's you on Netflix, it. right? It is on Netflix and you have absolutely got it. No, no, it. it's on HBO. Um, it's on, yeah, it is on HBO. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. Um, you've got to watch it on Hibo. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's HBO. Yeah. Um, but it, uh, <laughs> about nice. Um, noise. But if noise. Did I tell you? What, what did I tell you about that? Huh. The noise thing. I was, <laughs> I was riding my motorcycle <laughs> back and forth between uh, Riverside and LA because yeah. long story short I had to be back and forth between these two places and I kept seeing noise like n-o-i-c-e yeah. and I'm like is this a brand like what is this right yeah. and so then I like looked it up and I was like no fucking way and so on my way back I like paid more attention yeah. and it was no ice like <laughs> like the immigration <laughs> <laughs> noise and I <laughs> That's like, fucking incredible. Like, reading these signs, and I was like, "Why in the fuck is noise like, <laughs> posted all over the place?" You know, but it was no ice. I was just like, "Jesus, that's I'm awesome." An idiot. <laughs> uh, but um, but anyway, the 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 problem here. Well, the reason I brought Theranos up and was kind of rambling in that direction, yeah, dude. Like hard and fast rule. Hear me on this. Yeah. People who are building shit in the valley now, they have many things in mind. Your best interests are not one of those things. Yeah. Fucking period. Yeah. Like, not that that was ever the case, but this, like, Google's do no evil thing is yeah. so fucking absurd and, yeah. like, just not reality. Um, well, dude, you know, all of these are businesses, and businesses never fucking have your best interest in mind. Well, sure, yes, that is true. But now that shit's on steroids because yeah. the the gap is so large between, excuse me, between the technology, like the capability of the technology, and how yeah. people understand the technology. Yeah, like, yeah. Ga- gap is jai fucking gigantic. Like yeah. people don't understand that the, when they're taking. I mean, people are only now understanding, right? And still people are doing this shit. That taking personality quizzes on Facebook is really revealing all this other shit about you, right? That they are then packaging and like ramming products up your ass, you know? I mean, it's just, it's really crazy. And so, and which, which, which is, you know, in bad taste when they're trying to sell you products. Yeah. But it is fucking dangerous, dude. When yeah. you are t- when you're talking about people's DNA, yeah. You know, and and again, the craziest part about it is like, not to not to not to go too far with this, but the mm. craziest fucking part about it is people are worried about AI because they're like, well, AI, what you know, what happens? What happens when the you know uh, an algorithm is so intelligent that it self replicates and repairs <laughs> itself and whatever. And we're definitely far away from that. Yeah. But let me present this as like a fucking nightmare scenario, right? Yeah. Like blockchain at scale is decentralized, not owned by anyone, and is like an, an absurdly resilient uh, architecture, right? Yeah. Yeah. Me- meaning that it is hard as fuck to take down. That's yeah. why Bitcoin persists. That's why governments are like weirded out by Bitcoin. That's why Bitcoin has value, right? Yeah, yeah. But Bitcoin is really a big ass database. That's really what it is, right? It just keeps mm-hmm. it track, but nobody owns the the ledger, right? Mm-hmm. So let's say that you know blockchain in a world of the future gets its shit figured out, right? And so okay. now you've got this distributed database that nobody owns, okay? Mm-hmm. This distributed ledger that records things that nobody owns. Mm-hmm. And then you've got AI, some AI of the future that is true AI that can replicate and actually, you know, I'm not going to say true AI in that, you know, whatever. It, dream, it dreams, you know, of art or whatever the fuck. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just saying is highly functioning, right? Yeah. And so this AI then now has access 
and I have no idea how I'd use it, but I'm just making this scenario up right now in real time. Yeah. This 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 uh, AI then has fucking access to like literally the soup to nuts of yeah. a human of yeah. the of the human family, right? Mm-hmm. And so we could imagine a world where if if a if a an AI were looking for vulnerabilities in human DNA, they would find many. I think, right? Like mm-hmm. I'm saying, like if. For example, someone a, an AI that had access to all of the information wanted to run scenarios on a virus that could be created, a, an actual bacteria or whatever, or a virus that mm-hmm. could wipe out 99% of human beings, like, that might be able to be done, right? Yeah. Um, well, dude, to quote, to quote uh, Morpheus from The Matrix, imagine a world where humans are no longer born, they're grown. <laughs> I'm there, bro. Okay. Um, anyway, so my point is, don't give your fucking DNA to, to 23andMe. Well, let's yeah. let's move on. I, that was yeah. a, that was a long segment there. But. Yeah. Well, but the yeah, but it, it's uh, yeah, just fucking think think about the decisions you're making in any kind of data that you just decide to give up. That's that's kind of the the and obviously with DNA being the fucking the the biggest uh cache of data that you can give up so. yeah yeah and and but here's what's so fucked beyond that how do we how do you even know what you're giving up yeah yeah you know no, you're um, right. You're right. anyway anyway it's just crazy it's crazy yeah. okay so so let's give me uh, let's just say that uh that i wanted better grades yeah. right <laughs> so so this shit's actually not that? about uh uh grades really um, beautiful be- <laughs> yeah right um, so be- I, scam I, grades hmm. okay <laughs> I, pulled, I pulled this one from the uh, LA magazine um, and uh, it was called a Chinese cheating ring at UCLA reveals an industry devoted to helping international students scam grades so um, it is a grade but it's actually an, an, an entrance exam kind of thing um, basically what what they they found out this guy um his name's uh Lu Kai uh L I U C A I um and he was seen by everybody as like this model student and just like um you know just a a a, a model model student for UCLA or whatever volunteered at the boys and girls club um and just like basically every, everybody had only good things to say about him Okay. So, um, on a Pulse. random, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> on a, a random Tuesday morning in March, federal authorities arrested him on suspicion of facilitating an international cheating ring. So basically, what? Um, and now uh, he's he's been charged with this. I don't know uh, at this point if he's actually been convicted of these charges, but okay, allegedly, um, he he. Let's see, uh, him. Four current uh, and former UCLA uh, UCLA students and another student at Cal State Fullerton helped at least forty Chinese nationals obtain student visas by fraudulently taking the TOEFL uh, exam, which is an it's English a, proficiency exam. Right, right, right. So, so they <laughs> the reason he got fucking pegged is because of. Uh, like I, I don't think that he like they would have gotten away with this, but he literally charged thirty nine test registration payments to the same credit card. So they were like, mm, "What's going on here?" <laughs> right. And so it's like, why would you have to take this fucking thirty nine times? He's like, "But mm, I just love English." <laughs> yeah, right. But what what they did is they they uh, falsified IDs. And so they used the actual pictures of the test takers, but then they would use the names of the students that they were taking it for. Okay. And um, and this actually kind of kind of interesting side note. This actually happened at right around the same time that the big college entrance uh, exam scandal stuff with Felicity Huffman, Laura Laughlin, all that. Um, was it Laura Laughlin? Laura. Uh, Lori. Lori Laughlin. Okay. Um, but anyway, that actually happened. This stuff happened at the same time as that did, which they apparently called that Operation Varsity Blues. 
Uh, and then this one was dubbed as Operation T O E F L Recall. <laughs> okay. But, but since it wasn't, uh, since it, it had, it didn't have like, um, basically, it didn't have really high profile people that were getting pegged with this shit. So it just kind of flew under the radar. Okay. But in my opinion, I mean, like, this this is gonna sound I I I don't know what this is gonna sound like, but coming from uh the science department at UT, it it makes me wonder how much um how how big of a scale that this you know obviously they they got pegged for this and they were most likely helping whatever UCLA students Cal- California students kind of thing, okay. but it makes me wonder if it doesn't happen at other universities because you know you end up in these these uh classrooms with uh specifically like TAs or teaching assistants and i mean dude i can't tell you how many TAs that i had that were so difficult to understand because english was not their first language okay kind of thing and so it makes me wonder how you know how widespread is this you know did, did is this happening everywhere is this like you know because mainly mainly it was um people from um people well i guess eastern eastern asia um and like indian kind of thing you know like straight up from india indian sure um it's and, it, it's probably very 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 common yeah well and that's what yeah. i would think because i mean you know these people that i know that they have the intellect to for the material you know it's just the fact that the the language thing barrier uh, obviously for teaching <laughs> that that doesn't really uh jiha too well <laughs> right 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 but um but i just thought that this was uh, pretty interesting man because um yeah they were just uh they were they further down in the article um they were talking they referenced a wall street journal article and they said that um in the 2014 2015 school year um, they found that uh, the universities that reported cheating among international students, they found that at a rate uh, five times higher than domestic students. And in 2018, a professor at UC Santa Barbara uh, told the LA Times that Chinese students comprise 6% of the student body but account for a third of plagiarism cases brought against students. So yeah. it was just... It, it was very interesting, and it, I mean, it kind of makes me think, you know, because I know normally, um, and I'm, I'm totally going to stereotype, but Asian students normally are uh, more competitive for the most part, you know, and it makes me, it makes me, I, I say more competitive, they're more competitive than an, an, uh, any other student kind of thing, I would, I would say in, in my experience kind of mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Or Asian or Indian, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But um, and so that I mean, it kind of makes sense, man. That uh, you know that that they would want you know be under the stress to succeed, and so they're going to do whatever whatever it takes, you know. So, so I have a slightly different perspective here on this one, um, which is I think, um, and I I don't. I'm definitely speaking out of turn when when you apply what I'm getting ready to say to academia. Mm-hmm. But in the business world, it is well fucking known that, for example, dealing mm-hmm. with Chinese business people mm-hmm. is very challenging because the rules of engagement mm-hmm. are fucking way different, right? So like – in Chinese culture, or, or the lack thereof. Well, well, right. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like in Chinese culture, right? Like, if you're tricked, yeah, and you fall for it, it's because you're an idiot, yeah, right? Like, yeah. and and that is the way that I'm saying in Chinese business business culture. Now, obviously, that's had to be uh, slightly adopted. Mm-hmm. Um, because, <laughs> because, you know, that is not the Western. Um, what <clears throat> excuse me western business practices seem to be um the most popular around the mm-hmm. world right mm-hmm. and you know there are such things as handshake deals you know mm-hmm. um but in as supposedly 
and like Japanese culture is very, very, very different, right? Where it's like everything is slow and relationships take time and it's like all about trust. And then once people are in, they're in for a hundred years. I mean, there are literally companies in Japan that are, that that's like a, 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 you know, a mark that is, it's not super common, but it's not uncommon, right? Yeah. Um, uh, for people, for businesses to, you know, be a century fucking old. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, but, uh, and so then, then I would, ju- I would juxtapose that. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. I would juxtapose that with, um, with kind of the Chinese way of looking at it, which is like, uh, you know, all, every, anything goes. And if you're tricked, you're a moron. You know, and you deserve yeah. to be tricked, and I deserve to to win because I was I was more cunning than you were, and so my point is is that I don't know how much of that maps over to academia, but I wonder that would be an an interesting uh, interesting idea. And then of yeah. course, of course, you know when, and this sounds you know sounds like I'm, uh, I don't mean this in any other way than quite literally mm-hmm. when when there are, you know, y- your small hometown really means like you know <laughs> a city of five million <laughs> people yeah in, in some unknown province or whatever yeah um you know there are many heads for few slots and uh and so you know i would say that exacerbates the whole thing as well yeah. but uh yeah. but and you know <clears throat> look man i mean did you read uh, – I don't think we were going to – yeah, we're, this is definitely not on the docket for today. But did you read the thing about the the uh, Chinese chick uh, at Stanford and her parents paying $6.5 fucking million dollars to get her into Stanford? Did you read this? No, no, I didn't. I didn't read it. I mean, what? Well, that that was something else that I was going to uh, point out because, yeah, I mean, it's, it's insane the uh, – how far people will take this stuff. Um, they, they interviewed a guy, uh, his name's Andrew Chen of Whole Ren, which is, uh, Whole Ren is a firm that helps, uh, Chinese students apply to schools and jobs in the U.S. And, um, he, he told the story of a student who faked his, uh, TOEFL, um, score to get into Purdue. Then he paid somebody to attend classes for him. And then, uh, then his grades were good enough to get him into Columbia University for grad school, but obviously he didn't really have the education, so he was struggling, so he hired somebody else to take classes there. And then he was hoping to land a job at Goldman Sachs, um, but the kid had like an Eng- like English proficiency that was maybe high school level. And basically, once all the dust settled, this kid had ended up paying like I don't think that he got the the gig at Colvin Sachs, but he ended up paying about one point two million dollars uh, over the course of like his education t- for somebody else to fucking basically get it f- for him. So I mean, it's just it. it I, I definitely see how that could happen. Yeah. Um, but man, that's a, that's some fucking weird, weird area to live in, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've heard, I've even heard of, you know, domestic students that are you know, from the United States, right? Like, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. that, that, you know, their, <laughs> their parents think, they think that they're sending them tuition checks, right? Yeah. And these yeah. tuition checks are just like going to fucking other pursuits, and then they show up on graduation day and their kid's like, sorry, I lied. You know what I mean? <laughs> Dude, yeah. I'm serious. This shit happened to, to, to my in-laws, somebody that my in-laws knew, right? Oh, wow, really? Directly, yeah. They were sending yeah. this, their fucking daughter, they were sending her checks for four fucking years. And she like kept this thing going and was like, oh, yeah, like, graduate on Saturday. And then like right before they leave, they leave to go to their graduation, right? She's like, I've been lying to you <laughs> for four years. That's I mean, just in fucking sane. Well, dude. I think as a parent, like fucking shame on you. I'd be like, wait, honey, why do you want me to write you this check directly again? Like, yeah. if, if you're paying for this tuition, like, yeah. you know, I mean, I unless she was just so fucking manipulative and was like, you know, dad, like, I feel like it would really be helpful for me if you wrote the check because then it would show me the re- true value of money and how, you know what I mean? Like, and, yeah. then, and then with your mom, like, you know, whatever. I don't, yeah. But Jeez, so I, I get it. I definitely, I, I get it, but it's uh that's a bizarre world that, uh, yeah. 
I'm glad I've moved past. Now you're now you're gonna have to figure out if you if when your kid it should yeah, right. should he decide to if he doesn't become a, a DJ. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. And decide, he's gonna he's gonna be a, a dancer, dude. One hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, well, um, magic. <laughs> it's gonna be instead of Magic Mike, it's gonna be Fantastic Phil. <laughs> Fantastic Phil. <laughs> Good. Good. I I see it. I see it. You have to give, <laughs> tell him to give uh, Auntie Martha a call. Yeah, um, right. So next article here. Um, Facebook bans Alex Jones, Laura Loomer, and Laura Loomer for violating its policies against danger, dangerous individuals. But I would like to add to that. Mm-hmm. Louis Farrakhan also yeah. banned from yeah. Facebook, right? Laura Loomer and Alex Jones, low-hanging fruit. I, I'm not familiar with Laura Loomer. I think she's just a – would be considered a, quote, far-right provocateur. Um, gotcha. Let me, let me see. If I'm not mistaken, hang on. I think Laura Loomer um, – yeah, Laura Loomer. Yeah, 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 yeah. totally. <laughs> she looks like an android. Look at her. Look at her. Uh, look at her Wikipedia. Like she literally looks like a fucking like a like <laughs> not a human. <laughs> oh wow, yeah. <laughs> um, Laura, Laura Loomer just says like super controversial shit. Um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, there was something. Something that she said, um, like she'll like burst into, um, you know, into like, you know, public, uh, public meetings or whatever and just say provocative shit or whatever. Who fucking cares? You know what I mean? Like this she's, is just, she's busted into something. She's like, Pope's gay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dildo head. <laughs> penis, just, penis, penis. It's <sighs> just a white dildo. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's just his hat is just a big white dildo. Uh, no, but, you know, I mean, it. This is. Um, I'm gonna veer a little bit off on this because we're mm-hmm. we're we're, you know, getting getting to about that time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wanted to veer a little bit off this because something. There was another interesting article that I read that did not have. Which, by the way, you're totally fucking right, man. Friday and Saturday, some real bangers come out that we just don't sometimes we don't aren't able to turn quick enough to get onto the show yeah but um but there was one that i was reading and i think it came out on friday about a uh california high school teacher Mm -hmm. um who published was like the the advisor for a uh, school newspaper Mm -hmm. and the school newspaper um, published a story on a student, a current fucking student who was 18 years old mm-hmm. and in, and, you know, making her way in the porn industry and like published this story that was like, you know, the perils of the porn industry or whatever the fuck, right? Like yeah. what it's like being in the porn industry and published this in the paper and the chick, you know, consented to it and was interviewed and whatever, yeah. but was a current student. Yeah. Now, I think what's throwing throws this off a little bit, throws the tone off a little bit, is that they're like a high school newspaper. But if you like pull that all away, yeah, just say there is an eighteen year old person, right? Yeah, and a story was published about this eighteen year old person. Like, you know, whatever, man. I'm sure that shit's on like, you know, Teen Vogue does shit like that. You know what I mean? And then I'm sure like people under 18 probably read that shit you know that's just kind of the way it works yeah um but she and i i thought this was a really really interesting thing she was um threatened with dismissal if she published this or allowed this to be published or disallowed it being reviewed by some sort of you know committee or whatever at the school Mm -hmm. um and she was like, fuck it, man. This is free speech, right? And like – and so my point is – my point is, man, is that this shit with, you know, f- quote, far-right provocateurs, as mm-hmm. I put it a few minutes ago, yeah, being banned from social media, dude, like that is just not – 
fucking good. And we've said this so many yeah. times, but it is yeah. really, really, really silly and precedent and a bad precedent and one yeah. that we really need to think through because, man, I'm telling you, this California high school teacher taking a, yeah. a stand like that, yeah. fuck yeah, she should be able to publish it. It's a consenting adult who has said, mm-hmm. yes, I am, I am comfortable with that. Now, the level of appropriateness, okay, you've got my mm-hmm. attention there. You yeah. know, the level of appropri- <laughs> appropriateness of publishing this in a school newspaper, sure, I got it. Yeah. But very, you know, to the, to the, to the T of the law, um, that would be censorship. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, does that mean, I mean, if I highly doubt that this article read like, you know, penthouse forums, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, that, that would be absurd. But, but if it was like a factual article that was just talking about like, you know, the, the, uh, um, just being in the porn industry, being in the porn industry. Yeah. And, and frankly, when you read the, I forget what the, the name of the article was, but it was, mm-hmm. it was definitely a cautionary tale. You know what I yeah. mean? Like yeah. it was not, it was not, it like, wasn't, yeah, it wasn't promoting it or anything. Right. Right. It wasn't yeah. you know, spread and earn in 2000. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't like that was not spread it. Spread and earn. You know, I mean, it was just that, that was not the nature of it. <laughs> And the, so, the title of the article is called "Spread the Wealth." Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. You know, um, that's exactly right. How how I bought my car this summer, or how I bought my car this summer, or or the bang, bang bus and glory holes. You know, um, oh my god, um, oh, uh, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, you know, he told me they had a job. He wished that they had a job for me, you know, but there was no job. There never yeah. was a job. Um, you know, so anyway. Um, he told me I had a great voice. Yeah. Well, you know, that you know, casting couch. You know, casting couch. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Casting yeah, couch. totally. A casting couch where it's like, there's like, it, it's, there's like a guy typing at the first and it's like every model comes in and wants a job. You know, and I, I told him I'd love to give him a job, but there was no job. Just like, I'd, I'd love to Christ. write, uh, write like a script for a porno. I think that'd be really well, fun. Get after, it, dude, because if you can find if you can find the niche, man. I mean, def- <laughs> things are definitely void of meaningful dialogue, and, and, <laughs> yeah. and also have been have apparently digressed to where you know the hottest topic is like step moms and sons just like jesus christ dude and like yeah. anime you know what i mean yeah like, yeah <laughs> and, and also hyper realistic rick and morty you know <laughs> so whatever i don't know what's going on but um uh, but um no but back to the back to the the free speech stuff mm. it's just it's really troublesome to me that we are so, like, if people were cool with this, we wouldn't be talking about it as much as we are. You know what I mean? And, like, I believe, even though factually, I, I really do believe that that if we measure it out, most people, even on the left, mm-hmm. might be able to admit that there is a liberal-leaning bias in media and fucking certainly in technology. Yeah. Right. Um, now, the reasons it's a mixed bag, but I tend to think in technology, when you lean left and you say, fuck, yeah, we want everybody to be socialist. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. guess what? There's still a power structure. And if you're hovering over the socialist thing, you fucking run it all. Yeah. I mean, I can't, you know, yes, that's a bit a bit tinfoil hatty, mm-hmm. but like I I think everything comes back to power, right? Like, uh-huh. what do they say? Everything's sex except sex, and sex is power. You know what I mean? Like that, and it's true. It's totally, yeah. totally true. Yeah. So anyway, my my point is, my point is to rein it back in and and wrap up, wrap this up here. Yeah. Th- this this free speech conversation, man. Like, I please people who are listening to this and people mm. who are like thinking deeply about this, like. 
you know, pull head out of ass and like, <laughs> and like really think about what this means. Yeah. Alex Jones is a fucking walking cartoon. And I, I don't know that there are a lot of people that, that won't admit that. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. the guy, the guy is, he, I, I even think he makes some good points sometimes. I even think he's, mm-hmm. he's thought provoking at times, but he is a one sound bite after another, you know, yeah. and like, yeah. he just says shit like, you know, no water's turning the frogs gay. And then it like, <laughs> and then, and then you like tune in and he's like, well, actually it's the, you know, and he just says fucking crazy shit. Like Hillary Clinton was a goblin that ate kids or whatever the fuck, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, you know, but whatever, but he gets you reeled in. You're just yeah. like, what is this asshole talking about? Yeah. And so my point is, is that like, yes, people should be held accountable for what they say. No fucking doubt. But um, I just think that this is the wrong way to approach accountability. Approach yeah. it in the legal system, dude. Yeah. Um, yeah. These these social networks are too powerful. The problem is Mark Zuckerberg. The problem is, um, you know, Jack Dorsey, right? Yeah. The problem is is that these cats are misaligned with mm-hmm. in in my mind with the mm-hmm. fundamentals of of. Dude, in many ways, the fundamentals of the of the basic rights that were carved yeah. out, you know, two hundred years ago, f- yeah. flat fucking out. I mean, that yeah. is that is the reality. So I, that's a big statement, and that's a big bite to take in the last two minutes of our cast. But you know, yeah. I'd love to circle back on that. You know? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, for sure. Well, um, I guess at this point, um, maybe we should just do the the jingle, man. Do the jingle, dude. I'll yeah, just I just do do this just real quick. Take two minutes and go th- and go through that and go sure. through go through because this is a this is a big 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 deal and I was really glad you added it on there. Yeah, so. sure, man. Yeah, all right. Um, real, we'll we'll do time trial. <laughs> um, I pulled this one from. Uh, we'll we'll do time trial. Micro machines are only available. To- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, Beyond Meat rockets in uh, early trading on NASDAQ reaching a valuation of over $3 billion. So basically, um, basically they, they, they had their IPO, I guess, right? And, and then once it actually went public, um, the actual shares uh, went up 135% in, uh, in their market opener. Um, making the company uh, valued at uh, as high as three point five two billion dollars, um, which is just it's. I mean, that's huge. That is absolutely huge. And if you're not familiar with Beyond Meat, uh, they're they're basically um, a plant based meat uh, um, company that uh, they're. I mean, they're basically growing like lab meat kind of thing, right? Yeah, well, I think to a degree, I think beyond that's the goal, right? Yeah. Uh, I think Beyond Meat now is just using um, different mixes of like plant based ingredients to replicate mm-hmm. the texture and taste of of actual meat. Yeah, um, which and I was trying to remember if because um, isn't there is Beyond Meat uh, what's in the Impossible Burger? Is that different? Uh, I think it is. So there is there is another, you know, future protein company or whatever that's called. Yeah, I think that's actually called. Impo- um, it is. It's it's impossible. It's, yeah, it's, it's it's separate. Yeah, but um, but, but yeah, man. <clears throat> I mean this this is just gonna this is huge for many reasons because, um, and I think we were talking about it a little bit. Uh, before the show that the the effect that this will have um just because if if this if this ends up launching and and being a a successful business and they're able to roll out uh whatever plant based meat that is you know you that you can't differentiate between it and whatever store bought ground chuck or something like that um I mean that's that it's it's just going to be um it's going to upend the meat industry I would think um yeah man especially uh especially in regards to you know the the greenhouse gas stuff that we were talking about yeah that it's like 
people don't realize how much uh how much is generated just due to um like literally cattle out there eating whatever and farting a bunch kind of thing. <laughs> that, I mean pigs toot too. <laughs> yeah. But uh They all toot. <laughs> yeah, we all toot, man. <laughs> I, don't, I I didn't buy that book for fun. Yet. A- a- we everybody- all toot. Everybody toots. I mean, what do, you, what do you expect? No, I mean, look, this is this is a big deal, dude. I mean, it's yeah. they're, they're starting with the with the um, as you mentioned, the plant based ingredients and kind of getting that mix correct. But uh, yeah. next on the docket is lab grown meat, and once that hits, there, yeah. once you can get the exact same flavor profile, and more importantly. Um, nutritional profile and maybe yeah. even more importantly optimized nutritional profile right yeah. Um, yeah like from a steak you get what you fucking get right but if yeah. you could optimize that god damn what a sad future i'm just hearing myself saying saying this like i don't know why that kind of bums me out right well, no it, it's it's because it it almost I feel like it almost just simplifies life too much. It just, or, or it just takes it, and it, it just takes, just makes it really mundane, or it something. Makes, or makes it, it makes it really like like predictable. Yeah, yeah. maybe that's it. You know, it just yeah. seems like it, like the things that make life interesting are the things you can't predict. Like if yeah. you fucking knew exactly how everything was going to play out. Like that just seems, and so you're just living a pre this predetermined book. Even if yeah. she, destiny is predetermined, you don't fucking know the difference now. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So anyway, um, we can't, <laughs> we can't go there. Jesus. We just said yeah. This we just went been, philosophical talking about fucking beyond me. <laughs> yeah, and we've been. <laughs> this has been this has been the cast of tangents, and I feel like, <laughs> yeah. I feel like we're both just like levitating after you know <laughs> getting so deep on this shit. But uh, yeah. you know, I mean, but it's okay to get deep on me, you know. Um, <laughs> Right. <laughs> I said a funny. <laughs> I made a funny. I made a funny. Oh, um, okay. So, you ready? Let's do it. Dear. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We've enjoyed having <laughs> you here all hour long. Um, no, so, uh, dear listeners, thank you so much for uh, tuning in this week. I was gonna do a great coupon thing, but I uh, we, we ain't got time for another motherfucking skits. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know who do you, who do you think you are? Like a rapper in the nineties? You know, like, <laughs> every goddamn song had a skit. Uh, that was so irritating. Or, or the 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 uh, the voices that for some reason all these rappers were putting high pitched voices in their songs. That you know what I'm talking about? In the nineties. Uh, I guess no, that, no, was no. that was in the two thousands. Where it was, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it was just so fucking Con- annoying. Kanye for some did reason. that. Kanye yeah. did. Yeah. But before that, it was like hey, Twista man. did it too. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. Uh, yeah, it tw- Twista did it again. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. it's like now. Nah. It's like yeah, nah, you did it dude. again because yeah. you never did it. <laughs> you know. But then before yeah. that, it was it was like. Hey man, you know where I can get some, you know, weed? And then yeah. somebody else being like, "Nah, you know, you can't. Don't come in here asking, asking like that." And then somebody's like, "He's got a gun. He's got a gun." Bah, 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 bah. And it's like, boom, 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 boom. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. Every fucking song that <laughs> skit, and you're just like, "God damn it, man! The mu- this music's amazing. Quit fucking skitting me to the yeah. point where I'm like bummed about like the song. I have to fast forward." Two minutes and thirteen seconds just to get to the shit I want to hear. Um, yeah. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> again the cast of tangents today. Um, all right, dearest listeners, you have spent uh, a little over an hour and a half with us today, which we really appreciate your uh, your attention here in the matter, and have loved uh, getting you in again. Daniel and I are getting uh, a, a solid cadence back up. We are rounding the bases on a year of casting, mm-hmm. um, which reminds me, I need to renew some domain names, bro. <laughs> uh, but uh, yes, happy to have you. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to do the quick social jingle here just to make sure that we keep y'all shit straight. 
Uh, if you have questions, comments, um, hate mail, we always say that. We don't get a lot of hate mail, but send it. Anyway, <laughs> tetherradio at gmail.com. That's T E T H E R R A D I O. Sorry about that. I had a, I just I had a, <laughs> my brain just slid sideways for a second. Um, tetherradio at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter at tether underscore radio. Instagram, same handle at tether underscore radio. On Facebook, Tether Radio, all one word. This has been super rad, dude. Really enjoyed today. Oh, yeah. Um, so let's get this nice. packaged up. What is this? Episode... Episode 47 in the books. 47 in the books. Signed, sealed, delivered. And you, dear listeners, we're here to witness it all unfold. I'm Joseph. And I'm Daniel. We are reminding you to stay tethered, dear friends. Don't let this shit show get you down. We will see you next week.